that buzzer too loud. Here's your bag, ma'am. Thank you. I'll get it, Billy. Pick that hardware up, push your ankle bones right through the sole of your shoe. See you around. All right, see you around, Billy. Uh, tell that cute little Judy hello for me. Right. You know, I swear I know the man driving that wagon, but I can't recall his name. Well, it's Horse Cartwright from the Ponderosa, you know. Haas, of course. Should be easy to remember. He's as big as one. <laughs> yeah. We got the road to ourselves. Here. Ah. I hope I didn't cause you any trouble. Well, not at all. Uh, thanks for the ride. Oh, yes, ma'am. You're, you're welcome. Hey. Hey, where, where are you going? Wait, wait a minute. Where are you going? You can't just walk off into no place. I apologize for being in your wagon. I thank you for the ride. Well, sure you did, but... Then why can't I go where I want to go? Well, ma'am, you can, but... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you say we sort of start over again? What I'm trying to say is, ma'am, that, that I ain't angry for you hiding in my wagon. I was just concerned about you. All them boxes bouncing around. I was afraid you might get hurt. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Well, what I'm trying to say is, ma'am, if you want to ride, why don't you get up there in the seat? It's more comfortable. I can't just leave you out here, can I? I'm, I'm going to Carson City. 
Is there some place around here where I can catch a stage? Yes, ma'am. There's a, an old abandoned way station right down the road, but the driver will stop for you if he sees you standing out there. Is it out of your way? Not a bit. It's about a mile from my turn off. Come on. All right, all right. I'll ride with you. Fine, fine. There you go. By the way, my name's Hoss Cartwright. What's yours? I'm Lori. What are you doing in person? It's going to be about three hours before that stage comes by. I don't mind waiting. Ain't much in that old way station except cobwebs and spiders. I'll tell you what, if you'd like, we could have gone out to the Ponderosa and you could have a bite to eat and get a little rest. Thank you, but I've been posed enough already. Oh, ma'am, there ain't no imposition to have a bite to eat with some friends. We make friends around here pretty quick. Thank you, but I'd still rather not. Whatever you want, ma'am. Well. Uh, there is one thing. You don't happen to know what the fare is to Carson City, do you? Yeah, it's three dollars. Well, good day, ma'am. Thank you. Have a nice trip, you hear? Thank you. Ma'am, are you sure you wouldn't like me to stay here and wait with you? I, I hate to just leave you out here by yourself like this. Well, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, I'd be very much obliged. Oh, I ain't got much to do no how. It's your pretty day, ain't it? Yes. Hey, that's, uh, that's right pretty. Thank you. It's gold mounting. Cameo's good, too. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. I, I'd sell it to you for four dollars. Or three, if that's too much. I thought maybe you might like to buy it for your wife. I, uh, I ain't got no wife, but I'll tell you what. You, you keep the cameo and, and take this anyhow. Ma'am, it ain't enough even to be considered alone. No. No, I won't be beholden to anybody. I can't take the money unless you take the brooch. Well, I think that's the way you want. That's the way we like. Only, only if you'll write to me and let me know where you are, and I can send it to you if you ever want it. Thank you so very much. You don't have to wait with me now. I'll be all right. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. All righty. Good day again. Good day. Thanks for everything. Yes, ma'am. Have a nice trip, you hear? Thank you, I will. Something to keep you warm. Wait a minute.
That's all I've done. Pull this up real nice and snug. Should make you much more comfortable. Now, how's that? Yes, thank you. I, I still don't know what happened. One minute I was all right, and the next minute I was just gone. Yeah, we could have the doctor come out and take a look at you, Miss Laurie. Hey, it is Miss Laurie, isn't it? Yes, Laurie Brown. And I don't need a doctor, thank you. Whatever it was, it's gone now, and I feel fine. And I must catch that stage. Uh, not today, Laurie. That stage is already gone. You just rest. You can catch the one tomorrow. Be far from me, see? It's a good for you. Make a uh, jumpy stomach purr like kitten. Thank you. It does smell good. Oh, it tastes good, too. Here, I, I can manage that. Thank you. Have you, uh, you fainted many times before? No, never. You know, I ain't never fainted, but I felt mighty shaky when I missed a meal occasionally. You didn't by chance miss breakfast this morning, did you? I'm not proud to say this, but I didn't have any breakfast. Today or yesterday. Well, all you had to do... Hop saying, go in and get the lady a steak and gravy and, and biscuits and the whole thing. Get her a meal. Oh, no, 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 no. Broth first, then less, and then a big meal. But this lady's hungry. If no, I was... he, he is right about one thing. I am very tired. Well, if rest is what you need, rest is what you'll get. We got plenty of that. We got got lots of guest rooms. Come on, I'll help you out. There you go. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Hoss. Come, Missy, I show you. What? You get a nice less, and then after you less, I fix you anything you like to eat. Oh. You like a spaghetti, a Italian food. Hopsing ain't number one cook. Cook you anything you like. Well? Well what? I think just well. That's what Pa would say if he was in Sacramento, so I thought I'd say it for him. Well... I mean, I couldn't just leave her there at the way station, could I? No, 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 no. She just showed up in your wagon. That's right. She was sort of a stowaway. Oh, stowaway. Mm -hmm. Didn't tell you why, though. No, and I promised her I wouldn't ask. You ain't either, you hear? No, oh, you're right. I'm not gonna ask. I'm gonna go to work. Yeah, I'm gonna go up on Wayne Creek, and I'm gonna fix some fences, because that's something I understand. Well, I'd, uh, I'd stick to the regular boots if I were you. Them things will kill your feet. I've got to tell you. My first name is Laurie. Short for Annie Laurie. But my last name isn't Brown. Yeah, I... I sort of suspected that. If you knew I was lying, then... why were you so kind to me? Well, you didn't do it very well. And it's obvious you ain't had a lot of practice at it, and I didn't figure to be a desperate criminal. Oh, I haven't done anything against the law. But... It's not Miss, either. I'm married. I ran away from my husband. Well, I reckon you had good reason. Part of it was my fault. I married a man that I'd known for less than a week. I never dreamed that one person could be so wrong about another person as I was about him. I just had to get away. Have you got, uh, you got kin folks nearby here? No, I don't have any folks. 
except for an aunt in St. Joe. I was, I was going to get a job in Virginia City to help pay for the fare to get there. But when I got off the stage, I saw a friend of my husband's. He'll get word to my husband. I just know he will. And you figure your, your husband will come after you then, right? Yes. I can't go back to him. I think I'd rather die. You see, that's why I was trying to catch the stage to Carson City. I just have to get to Carson City. All right. You will. I'll get you there first thing in the morning to catch that stage. But right now, I think you ought to get a little rest. Yes, I can now. And I will. Come on. Where you been, boss? Kelly expected you yesterday. I didn't have anything to tell him yesterday. sign of her. The lady got off the stage in Virginia City. She's where we can reach out and get her when it's time. What do you mean, when it's time? Why didn't you bring her with you? Oh, easy, boy. Slow down, Kelly. Easy, boy. Did you expect me to kidnap her off the street? She's my wife. I told you to bring her back. And that's why I do the planning, not you. Now let go. Always split the partnership and you can do it all on your own. Cooped up here. I'm going half out of my head. to Lori tonight. Count me out. Kelly, you can't go near Virginia City. You're wanted all over this state. Not to mention California, Utah, and Montana. Almost any place you name. There's a rope waiting for you. How would you like to be a free man, Kelly? Able to ride into any town, anywhere, and spend all that money I helped you make. If you'll forget Lori, I'll show you how to do it. Keep talking. Ever hear of the Cartwrights? The Ponderosa Ranch. Yeah. We're going to use Lori and the Cartwrights to make you a free man. I hurried. I hope I'm not too late. Oh, no. It'll be an hour before the stage gets to the way station. We're only 20 minutes from there. Sit down. Here. Sit down. Have some breakfast? What'd you like? Oh, no, thank you. I, I really couldn't eat a thing. How about, uh, how about some coffee? Oh, well, fine. We've got some things we need to talk over anyway. That little dab of money I gave you yesterday, that's all you've got, ain't it? It'll be enough to get me to Carson City. 
I'll find a job there. You know that a friend of your husband saw you in town? Yes, Paul Rogers. Well, I'll see you safely to the stage, but you mustn't stop in Carson City. Rogers or your husband would find you there in 10 minutes. You must go all the way to St. Joe here. I couldn't accept this. It's just a loan. You can pay me back when you get it. Just send it to Hoss Cartwright, Ponderosa Ranch, Nevada. That's all the address you need. No, I, I really can't accept this. Don't argue with me, Lori. I get meaner than a snake when people argue with me. You couldn't be mean. You wouldn't know how. You're so kind. I'd forgotten there were people in the world like you. I'll get the buggy. Mr. Cartwright, I'm Paul Rogers. Yes, I know. I'd like to talk to Laurie for a few moments. Well, I'm not at all sure that... It's all right, Hoss. Your husband wants to see you, Laurie. I don't want to see him. He's thought it over, Laurie. He's willing to give you a divorce. What he wants to hear you ask for. No, I don't want to see him. Well, what's the harm? He just wants to say he's sorry and tell you goodbye. Do you see anything wrong with that, Mr. Cartwright? I see that as her decision, Mr. Rogers. Why didn't he come himself instead of sending you? You know why, Laurie? He's a proud man. And too proud to chase you and beg for a few words. He's willing to give you a divorce, but you have to come halfway. It's a wise thing to do, Laurie. If you get on the stage, you'll be waiting in Carson City when you get there. And no telling what he'll do or say then. I, I wouldn't go alone. I, I couldn't. Will you go with me? Certainly. Very good. It's not far from here, a side road, rough but passable. <laughs> this way. See, it didn't take long. Hello, Lori. I'm glad to see you. Even if you aren't glad to see me. My wife and I have a little talking to do. I'm sure you gentlemen will excuse us. Of course. If anything happens to her... She is his wife, Mr. Cartwright. Did you think I wouldn't follow you? find you wherever you went? Roger said that you'd give me a divorce. I told him to say that. I want you to go with me to Arizona, Texas, and Mexico. No, I won't go. You'll go. Now don't scream, Laurie. Or that big friend of yours will come charge into the rescue and I'll kill him before he gets through the door. That's a promise. You scream, 
I'll kill him. Understand? <laughs> That's better. You're gonna like Mexico. No. I won't go. You'll go. In a minute, you're gonna walk out there and smile real pretty and tell your big friend that you're gonna stay with your lawful husband. You're gonna tell him that or he won't live to get back home. I won't go. I won't go with you. If you force me, I'll run away again. No, Larry. You're not gonna run away again, not ever. I won't go with you. I won't stay with you, either. I'd rather die. Big talk. I don't believe a word you're saying. It's true. I mean it. Go ahead, prove it. It's a gun. Pick it up. I won't stop you. Pick it up. Cock the hammer. Pull the trigger. Go ahead. Cock it. Pull the trigger. Scared, huh? I'm gonna show you who's boss. Gonna hurt you, Laurie. And you're not gonna make a sound. telegrams for the last month on Kelly Adams. He was wanted for three murders and about a half a dozen bank robberies. Did you know about that? No. No, only that he was wanted. He was drinking one night and bragged about it. See, that's that's why I ran away. Well, I doubt seriously if you got anything to worry about. But, but, but I, I killed him. That's something I can't ever forget. But you've got to remember, your husband was wanted, dead or alive. He had two cash rewards out for him. And from what you tell me, he threatened Horse Cartwright if you so much as called out for help at a time that he was hurting you. Now, what you did had to be in self-defense. That's what I've been telling her, Roy. Well, Joan, the deputy waiting outside. We better get on out to that cabin. I'm going to take Laurie back to Ponderosa. All right.
got a mighty tired horse. We ran him all the way from town. He's going to have to have some rest. I should have told you who my husband was. I tried to, but I was too ashamed. Well, don't talk about it, Lori. That is, unless you want to. Kelly could be very nice. I, I, I was clerking in the mercantile in Placerville. We bumped into each other one evening in the rain, and I got mud all over my dress. Next day, he bought me a new dress. Prettiest one I'd ever seen. How long ago was that? Four months. Cholera took Ma and Pa, and I had no friends or kin in Placerville. Kelly would be waiting when I finished work. He took me into the jewelry store one evening and bought me that cameo. Well, it ain't been easy for you, has it? But you can start forgetting about it now. Eat him. Eat him. Horses are out front. I'll need uh, three or four minutes to write this note, and we can ride. Well, what do you think? Dark hair, no mustache. You'll get by. Especially when we get out of this part of the country. You'll need a new name. Got one picked out yet? No hurry, but I'm sure you'll think of one. Right. How about a drink for the road? Now, easy on that stuff, Kelly. You know how you get. Cheers. What's this note you're writing? I told you, for the sheriff. Now, listen, Kelly. And listen good. You're an old, old, old friend of mine. Understand? Yeah. I don't want you put away in Boot Hill. So I'm taking your body home for burial in the family plot. Comprende? Right. That's enough. Yeah, this plan of yours. Very good. That's very good. Only I'm going to change it some. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Lori's going with me. Oh, Lori's going with you. Oh. You take her. You even try and take her. And you've thrown away everything we've done. You see, she's my wife, my woman. No woman ever walked out on Kelly Adams, and she's not about to be the first. What about the Cartwrights, mister? Flesh and blood, like the rest of us. They stop 45 slug, they'll die. One or all of them, they'll die. You take Laura, you kill a Cartwright, and you start the biggest manhunt Nevada ever saw. You're right again, Rogers, only they won't be hunting me. I'm dead. Mr. Duncan, I told him to meet me here. Kelly, you've got to listen to me. Lori gone. A cut right dead. The sheriff's going to turn over every rock in the country. He's going to wonder about that note. Everything we've done will be wasted. Go right ahead, Duncan. What are you doing, Duncan? You're the thinker. You make the plans. We do the work, take all the risks, and you get a third of the take. Only some of them plans were full of holes, like Red Hill. Two men were killed. Salty and Big Jack. That was sure somebody's fault. That was an accident, a mistake. Coal oil burns real well. Burn the cabin? Why? You made another mistake. Salty was a good friend. 
Rode with me for 10 years. Man's good friend gets killed. Somebody's got to pay. All right, Dunk, you can do the outside. Just a minute! You heard me, Dunk. Duncan! You listen! You listen to me. You need me. Every job I tell you how and when. Not anymore, Rogers. Gloria, I wish you'd change your mind. I can't see no reason in just rushing off. No, I can't stay. It's a big house. We've got lots of room. Besides that, Paul's going to be kind of angry with us if he finds out we let you get off without his saying hello. Besides that, you hang around long enough and you'll get to like this country. The mountains and the streams and the lakes. And... Can't you see? So many terrible things have happened here. I, I want to go back to St. Joe. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, there'll be an inquest and statements to make, possibly both. As soon as the sheriff says it's all right, I'll put you on the first stage. <laughs> oh, now, don't cry. Please don't cry. Here. Thank you. It looks to me like Mr. Rogers didn't want his friend buried in a criminal's grave, so he just set fire to cabin and skedaddled. No use of chasing him, though. No, he wasn't wanted. Yeah. I know that Laura's husband was wearing this belt buffer when he came out on the porch. I don't know about that other stuff. Well, this watch has his name inside the case. And the ring has got both his and her initials in it. Of course, I, I would like for her to see these things. Roy, she's kind of shook up right at the moment. It'd be a kindness if you'd wait a while and let her sort of gather herself up. Oh, I can take care of that, all right. The coroner's down with some kind of a fever. It'll take me three, four days before he's up and around again, so I'll tell you what. I'll get word to you just as soon as we want her in town. Wait, wait, wait a minute, I'm saying run all that by once again at a trot and in English. Mr. Lolly, she gone. Hopsy fixed a train. She Nobody home. Oh, where? How oh, I know. She says she wanna go back to St. Joe. Wait, wait, wait. When she leave? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sick, busy in the kitchen. I make a cup of big steak, big steak. He go, she go, everybody go, nobody home again. All work, all day, no play. my good and faithful wife. You disappoint me. I come back from the grave. I figure the least you can do is give me a big kiss of welcome. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Coming. You tried to kill me. Look at Sid. Oh, 
Oh, it's his clothes. You're wearing his clothes. You killed him. Never mind about Rogers. What you got to remember is that Kelly Adams is dead and buried. My name is Winters, Henry Winters. We're going to get on that stage, man and wife. We're going to Carson, then Texas and Mexico. No, I won't go with you. You can't make me go with you. There's a rider coming, somebody from the Ponderosa. Yeah, somebody's coming. After the buggy or you? It better be for the buggy. It's your big friend. Looks like he just ran out of luck. You aren't going to kill him just because he's been good to me. Well, maybe not. If we can strike a bargain, you and me, two things you got to do. Get rid of him. I don't care how you do it. Just send him away. All right, I'll do my best. And you got to give me your word of honor. We go all the way to Mexico. Man and wife. No trouble. All right, all right, I promise. All right. <laughs> Get up fast. Oh. Right, now, I want you here. If he even sounds like he suspects something, yank the door open and get out of the way. I'll be sitting waiting. sore at me. For boring the buggy? Why should I be? Not just the buggy. For leaving without a thank you or goodbye. You see, Horse, I was scared. I trusted you, but I didn't trust the sheriff. I knew that it was time for me to go. Yeah. Yeah, I know that feeling. I sometimes can't hardly wait to get on my way myself. You've been so good for me, and I do thank you for it. I'm... I'm sorry that you had to come after the buggy. But you don't have to wait around till the stage gets here. Oh, Phil, I'd be much obliged. I, I know it sounds ungrateful, but I'd rather you didn't stay. I'd like to be alone. Yes, ma'am. I know that feeling, too. Well... They must have dropped my purse. Yeah. Is, uh, is everything all right? Yes. Please go, Hoss. Please go. Well, I reckon there's nothing left, but goodbye. Big man.
Do you solemnly swear that all the facts and statements contained in this deposition, which you have signed, are true, so help you God? I do. Well, that does it. You're free to go, and I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you, sir. Free to go. You don't know how wonderful that sounds. Yeah, I think I do, Miss Laurie. St. Joe and old friends and family, a new start. But, you know, you can have that new start right here if you want to, and I'll help you. I would, horse, if I had your courage. Oh, you got plenty of your own. Risk your life to save mine out there at the way station. I don't know many folks have done that. But I reckon you'd have, you'd have done that for anybody, wouldn't you? Oh, no, not for anybody. Just somebody is dear and kind as you are. But so much has happened. I just have to have a chance to get away and think. You do understand, don't you, Hoss? Yes, I'm right. All right, I do. I'll write to you, I promise. You write to me. How would you like to do this man to man? No guns. Yeah. around here for a long time and I've heard some pretty tall tales but this one purely stops the clock. I'm telling you the truth, Sheriff. That's exactly the way it happened. Well, the judge will be here in a few days. You can try your story on him. Sheriff? What do you want, Quinn? Well, I uh, heard what happened to Leggett, so I thought I just better step up and tell you what I know. Like what? Well, it was bad blood between this one and Leggett. They had a big fight out near my corrals the day they started the drive for Sacramento. Oh, I heard about that fight and four or five more. Did you hear he said he was going to kill Leggett? Did you say that, boy? Yeah, yeah, I probably did. About the time he was knocking me down or I was knocking him down. We were a little bit riled up, Sheriff. All right, you said your piece, Quinn, so, uh... Why don't you go on back to buying cattle and leave the law work to me, all right? I'm just doing my duty, Sheriff. Thanks a lot, conscientious citizen. Sheriff? 
Well, can I send a telegram? To who? Ben Cartwright in Sacramento. Yeah, I reckon you can if you can write it out and pay you for it. Thanks a lot. Leggett pull a knife on you. The Leggett and I were always fighting, you know that. Well, I know that, but fighting is one thing and murder is something else entirely. Yeah, I know. Well, why did he use the gun? Why did he throw away the gun? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to make the noise. That horse thief. Was he the only Indian around? He's the only one I saw. I know he's the only man who can prove I didn't kill Leggett. What did he look like? About my height, my weight. Uh... Long black hair, wore a blue shirt, sleeves were cut off, and a uh, beaded belt. How do you find a horse thief? I don't know. Easy to find a needle in a haystack. All we can do is start looking where Candy saw him last. Yeah, even if we find him, can he take his work? Hey, pa, I got an idea. Yeah. I'll need some money. How much? Two hundred dollars. Your ideas are bold, but very expensive, Joseph. For Candy's sake and yours, I, I hope this is a good one. Fifty? Hundred? Twenty? Forty? Sixty? Eighty? Two hundred, right. Right. I've sold you Cartwrights a lot of horses, but I've never sold you one as good as this. Never for that kind of price either, Jack. Two hundred dollars for that horse is highway robbery, and you know it. <laughs> you cut rates can afford it. I'll see you later. Thanks, Jack. Little brother, quit playing games with me. What do you want with this horse, anyhow? I'm gonna use him for bait, Hoss. Bait? Bait. I've already gone over the facts of the case with the sheriff. You have? I realize Mr. Canaday would need a good lawyer, in which case he'd come to me. It saves time if I'm conversant with facts. They have a good case, circumstantial but strong. It could go either way. Do you think you can help him? I'll try. The fee is $500 in advance. You don't think the man's life is worth $500? Well, yes, I guess I do, of course, but... You're paying me to tip the scales of justice in your favor. Justice is not inexpensive. Squirrels turn around up there. No. Dat burn bugs, chiggers and skeeters, and I got everything but mice. Ah, well, don't tell me your troubles. You know, if we can get a pout to come up and steal that, that apple loose ten to one, it won't be the right pout. Uh, we'll just turn them loose and wait for the right one, that's all. Yeah, but will the right pout come along before they hang Gandy or after? Charlie boy. Charlie. Charlie boy. Yeah. Charlie boy. Come on, up you go. And a boy. You Charlie boy. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Now, you used to work for John Leggett, didn't you? Not anymore, I don't. He's dead. 
<laughs> I know. Uh, Charlie boy? I was wondering if you knew of anybody who might have a reason to kill old Leggett. Me. Leggett don't pay me my wages. But I didn't kill him. Besides, I scared of Leggett. It's funny. Leggett was scared too. Mean as a scorpion. But he was scared. He owed somebody a lot of money. Drinking together one night. He told me, if he don't pay up, he's going to get killed. Who do you owe the money to? I don't know. That's when I fell asleep. No sign of anybody. Two days, we haven't even seen an Indian. Yeah, we can't get lucky like Custer. It was a good idea, Joe. It just didn't work. We'll get back in Reno first thing in the morning for the trial. All right. sleep trying to catch you. And ain't nothing makes me matter than losing all that sleep. Joe? Wake up, Joe. I think we got him. At least we got a fella that fits the description. And blue shirt, beaded belt. Fits the description, all right. What's your name? Oh, it's you play. Well, I can say we come as friends. Yeah, I got a feeling he's not gonna believe that. Look, we need your help. How do you say we need your help? Come so to Paul. What do you say? That's how you say we need your help. Speaks English. I also speak Paiute, which makes me smarter than you. Well, if you're so smart, how'd you let us catch you? All right, horse. Look, we've been looking for you. Is that why you have been leaving that horse staked out? Yeah. How did you expect to find me while you were hiding under trees? Well, we found you. That's the important thing, ain't it? About a week ago, you tried to grab two horses. Uh, a friend of ours caught up with you, a fellow named Candy. You had a fight. You remember that? Why? Because during that fight, there was a shot. That shot killed a man. And that friend of ours is being held for murder. I remember. It happened as you say. All right, will you come with us to Reno and testify to that? No. I told you, you go to Reno and tell them. We can't do that. You're the witness. You have to testify. All right. Bring them here. I will tell them. We can't bring the court here. You're going to have to go there. If you don't, he'll hang. If I do go, 
they will hang me. No, they won't. Now, look, we guarantee it. We'll get you into town and out again. No. Well, they probably wouldn't take the word of a horse thief anyhow. I am a chief. You're a horse thief. I am a great horse thief. Brave men steal the horses of their enemies. When you steal a man's horse, you steal his pride. It gives you honor. Where I come from, it gets you hung. But we can take you whether you want to go or not. Even if they will not believe a horse thief? Now they might believe a chief. Ah, oh, Joe, he ain't no chief. Chief wouldn't let himself get caught this easy. You did not catch me. I caught you. I told him to cut your heart out, he would do it. If I told him to strip the flesh off your back inch by inch, he would do it. Do you know why? Because I am a chief. You're not a chief, you're a coward. Shall I show you? Or how, by having him kill me? The Cheyenne let their women kill prisoners. Are you trying to prove you're as brave as a Cheyenne squaw? No, a chief is a man who looks for justice. He couldn't let an innocent man die. It'll be just one less white man for me to kill. It takes no courage to have someone else do your killing. You're a coward. You're afraid of the white man. Yeah, I'm okay. I will go with you to Reno. But before this is over, you will eat your words. Because I will feed them to you on the point of this knife, one by one. talk about me like I'm some kind of horse. He speaks English. Why don't you tell me? Uh, who is he? Oh, it's my father. What is his name? Ben Carter. Can he speak Paiute? Oh, I, I, I can speak for myself. I can too. So if you have any more questions, ask me. Um, sorry. Horse, uh, why not I'm talking here to, uh, uh... Jokova. <clears throat> well, I, uh, went over to Mr. Scott. He's the lawyer I hired and tell him I want him over here. I want him to hear what Jokova has to say. Well, I'm, can we get something to eat first while I'm starving? Yeah, I'm kind of hungry myself, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, I could use a steak. Ah. Uh, Jokova? Hmm. Yeah. What would you like to eat? You just name it and we'll be happy to get it for you. Buffalo hump. Oh, I, I, I don't think that they'd have buffalo hump in the restaurant. Then I'll have boiled dog. You don't uh, eat what everybody else eats, huh? How about steak? That's cow. Yeah, uh, it, it is a cow. 
You know, they might have some venison. Well, as a matter of fact, they do. I saw it on the menu. They have venison. Venison. Fine. How do you want it fixed? Or an open fire made with dry buffalo chips. Oh, well, sure. Yes, that. Yeah, Hoss, uh, stop by at the jail on the way and uh, tell kind of the good news. Yeah. Well, uh... Yeah, I think uh, this would be a good room for you to be in. That way nobody can get in here without coming through here first. See? That way nobody will get to see you. I'll uh, call you as soon as the food gets up. Oh, brother. What's wrong? Well, do you know what that is? Hmm? The most wanted Indian in the territory. What? Well, there isn't a lawman around that doesn't want to get his hands on him. Oh, that's great. What do we do now? Try to figure out some way of keeping our only witness from being hanged. Make leather soft. I was wondering, where'd you learn to speak English? From Pony Soldier. When I was small, I lived outside of the Fort Gates. Is that where you learned to hate the white man? You think because I steal their horses, I hate the white man? When you kill them. I have never killed one white man. Everybody thinks you have. Yes, and this is good. If they think I am a killer, they do not chase me when I steal their horses. Who's there? It's me, Paul. Well, I'm old slow. Good evening, Mr. Cartwright. Picked a most inconvenient time for consultation. Well, I didn't think this could wait. Trial is tomorrow. It hasn't slipped my mind, if that's what's worrying you. I would like to get back to my poker game. A man is on trial for his life, and that trial starts tomorrow morning. And I'm defending him. That is a terrible responsibility, Mr. Cartwright. I'm fully aware that I hold another man's life in my hands. In court tomorrow, I will do my very best. Well, Mr. Scott, I'm sure that you will do your very best. And, uh, matter of fact, to ensure that, we have a witness for you, uh, an eyewitness, a man who was with Candy when that shot was fired. Then he really is innocent. What do you think? It doesn't matter what I think. Innocence or guilt, it's for the jury to decide. All right. Let's see the witness. You're joking. He was with Candy when Becky was killed. He is Jokova, isn't he? Yes. I'm sorry you went to all that trouble. We can't possibly use him. His appearance in court would prejudice the entire case. How? Oh. He's an Indian and a wanted man. You mean you, you're not going to use the only witness we have who can corroborate Candy's story? No. It would only confuse the court. They wouldn't know whether to hang the... Defendant or hang the witness. They might end up by hanging them both side by side. You're not going to use them? No. Well, then, I'm afraid we're going to have to get ourselves another lawyer. If you can find one. I'll see you at the trial anyway. I wouldn't miss this for the biggest poker game in Denver.
was the best lawyer in town. Well, I say good riddance. Let's get the second best. Well, he's also the second best and third and worst. He's the only lawyer in Reno. I guess that leaves it up to us and, and Jokova. Jokova, just tell me exactly what happened out there so I'll know what to say in court. Two white men were fighting while I stole their horses. Oh, I, I don't think you'd better say anything about stealing horses in court. It is the truth. Yes, I know. No? No, you tell it just the way it happened. Somebody said they seen your two boys here sneaking the engine up, up the back way. Oh? Well, it looked a whole lot like Jokova. Well, I wonder who'd say anything like that. I don't know, but as long as I'm here, I might as well take a look around. What's in there? There's something in there, Mr. Cartwright, you don't want me to see? Of course not. Well, you, you won't mind if I take a look at myself, then, will you? Hey, CJ, you still down there? Right where you left me. Anybody come out of your window? Nothing's moved since you went up them stairs. before it's time for you to appear in court. And when it is time, I'll have the boys come and get you. All right? you need me. Thanks. Who's the judge? Judge Butler. He's the hanging judge. Thanks. One of my lucky days. 
Take your hats off. Stand up. Sit down. All right, Mr. Prosecutor. What have you got? Hello, Ben. Morning, Your Honor. What are you doing here? Well, I'm uh, acting as counsel for the defense of Mr. Kennedy. Come here a minute. You're no lawyer, Ben. Well, I know. What makes you think you can handle the defense of a man who's on trial for his life? Well, somebody's got to do it. Oh. Can't get a lawyer to take the case, huh? All right. There's something you ought to know that's very important. If murder's proved, it's a hanging offense. I know that. Now, let's get on with it. Hiram, uh, Mr. Prosecutor, call your witnesses. I call Joe Cartwright. Put your hand on the Bible. You swear to tell the truth? Yeah. Sit down. Mr. Cartwright, did you ever see the uh, defendant and the murdered man in a fight? Yeah, I guess I did. How often? Uh, two or three times, I guess. Maybe four? Yeah, maybe. Enough to know they really hated each other, right? I'm waiting for your answer, Mr. Cartwright. Candy didn't kill him. What were they usually fighting about? Oh, anything and everything. It didn't take much of a reason and never was very serious. Do you think either of them took the threat seriously? Well, Leggett said that Candy was a hard case and meant to kill him. Now, in your opinion, why would the murderer bring the body of his victim back to town? Hmm. Throw suspicion off himself and... Maybe onto the Indians? But could it have been the Indians? Well, he still had his scalp. No, I don't think it was the Indians. Your witness, Mr. Cartwright? No questions. That's all, Sheriff. Thank you. That's my case, Judge. Ben? Right, let's go get Joker. Don't bring him in. Don't let anybody see him until I call for him. I have to tell you, he's got a pretty good case. You sure you can handle the defense? Well, so that depends on you and Hiram. guarantee the safety if he'd come in here and testify. Well, I'd kind of like to hear what this joker has to say. Hiram? I don't know, Judge. What is it you don't know, Hiram? Well, in the first place, he's a savage. Yes, oh. His swearing on the Bible wouldn't mean a thing. Oh, come on. You don't have to believe in the Bible to be able to tell the truth. But there's more to it than that. Get off your high horse, Hiram. Let's see what this man has got to say. It's your courtroom. You can go. Now, Ben Cartwright is about to call a witness. 
You may not like this witness, but he's here to see justice done. And if anyone so much as lays a hand on him, he's going to have me to deal with and the devil to pay. Ben, call your witness. Well, Your Honor, uh, my, my, my boys have just gone out to, uh, to get him, and I'm sure they'll be here in, in just a moment. You've got 30 seconds. Delaying things, Cartwright. Your Honor, uh, I would like to ask for a temporary recess and uh, until we until we can find our witness. I am here, Mr. Cartwright. Please tell the court your name. Joe Kova. And you are a member of the Paiute Nation? I am a chief. Now, chief Jokova, do you know what this trial is about? Yes. Now, would you please tell the court where you were and what you were doing the day Leggett was killed? I was hiding in the woods. I saw two men coming. One was the man who was killed. The other was this one. They left their horses and they climbed to a high point to look around. The one who was killed attacked this one with a knife. While they were fighting, I ran out to steal their horses. Shut up! <clears throat> I see. And then? I was riding away with their horses when this one jumped from uh, a bank and knocked me from the saddle. While we were fighting, there was a shot I thought more white men were coming, so I rode away and hid. I saw this one run back to the other man. The other man was already dead. Thank you, Chief Joffre. Your witness. Why did you hide when you saw the two riders approaching? Because I was going to steal their horses and their guns. Shut up! Did you intend to kill him? Only if I had to. Judge, you can't take the word of a man like this. He just confessed to being a horse thief and a would-be murderer. Why, you don't believe all the things he said about himself, do you? I certainly do. Well, if they're true, the rest is true. And Mr. Kennedy is innocent. Sit down, Hiram. Was Leggett killed by an Indian? No. 
If it had been one of my Indians, he would have bragged about it. Did you see anything else? This. It was in the grass where the two white men were fighting. Why didn't you mention this before? Nobody asked me. Mr. Kennedy? You own a gold toothpick? <laughs> me? I never owned a gold toothpick. I don't think I've ever seen a two or three before. Wait, 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 wait. Joe, Joe, who was it? Quinn! Yeah, it's Quinn. Mr. Quinn, if you've got a gold toothpick, let's see it. I, uh... Well, I, uh... I guess I left it at home. You know it? I'd like to ask another question. Go right ahead. Jokova, is there something that you haven't told us because nobody's asked it of you? Yes. What is it? After this man rode out with body, I saw another white man come out from hiding behind trees. I followed him to Reno. It was this man. That's a lie. And he rode an unshod Indian pony. Lies. Every word. No, 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 they're not lies. An unshod pony to make the killing look like the work of the Paiutes. No! You and Liggett were working together. No. Of course they were. That's why Liggett wanted to bring the herd back to Reno. To sell the beef to you for $12 a head. Instead of the 18, we could get in Sacramento, of course. That's what Charlie Boy was talking about. He said that Liggett owed somebody a lot of money. They was afraid the fellow was going to kill him. It was you that killed him, wasn't it? No. I think you're lying. Put that man in jail, Crawley. Well, George, what about uh, Jokova? Well, if it hadn't been for Jokova, we might have hanged an innocent man. Now, the rest of you people, sit down. This court is still in session. You take that man over and lock him up, Crawley. Yes, sir. Mr. Quinn, you're going to need a good lawyer. I'll go with you. Now, the rest of us are going to sit here for 30 minutes while I review this case. Ben, I don't think I'm going to need you or your witness anymore. Thank you, Your Honor. Jokova, let's go. Ready, Paul. Oh, good. We're almost ready, too. Look at that. Hold it. Don't nobody move now. I don't want nobody to get hurt. All I want is out that Indian. What? Now, you just put your guns on the bed spread there, real nice and neat like. Come on. All right, if you'll just fold it up. A nice little bun for me. Judge promised you a immunity. I don't care what the judge said. under the bed, Sheriff, where I was before. Come in. All of you. You called me a coward. Now you will eat your words. You're a brave man. And a chief. You're also a thief. A great thief. 
A big thief, anyway. You will go with me. As I told you, I have killed many white men. One more will make no difference. Do not follow me. means it. He'll kill Joseph. Mustn't follow him. There, take the horse. He's yours. Go on. I told you he's yours. What are you waiting for? If I rode into my village on this horse now, my people would know you gave him to me. What's wrong with that? I do not accept gifts from my enemies. Or from your friends? You know something? You feel mighty good to get back to that ranch. <laughs> For a while there, I thought maybe I wouldn't go to make it. Ooh. Jokova. Jokova. I didn't get a chance to thank you. Welcome. It is not easy to be friends with your enemy. Now, before I steal from a white man, I will have to look into his face to see that I am not stealing from a friend. You know, after you get to know him, he's a pretty decent sort of fellow, wasn't he? Yeah. Sure did a lot for me. Mm. Yeah. You know, in a way, I'm sorry I didn't take that horse. Yeah. Strange man. But in his own way, a very honest man. Son of a gun stole the horse. <laughs> well, as I said, in his own way, a very honest man. <laughs>